welcome to my studio. I'm Vlad Duchev. Small tips how to paint in oil. Today we're going to talk about uh, mediums and paint or colors. Uh, there's, you know, some people ask me a question what is on my palette, what colors I'm using, what brand I'm using, and brands of uh, paint I'm using, and also what medium do I use. So let's get started. Mediums. Uh, I'm using, in my process of painting or flow of painting, I'm using only two mediums. One medium is for underpainting um, and another medium set for uh, following layers of uh, when I'm building up the colors uh, and sculpt, what I call sculpturing the colors or layers. Uh, the next layer for example, the un underpainting that I'm using one one medium is a very very thin layer, and it works like oh, I, I recommend watch the video about um, what is underpainting in my opinion. Uh, so it's a very very thin uh, layer of underpainting, and then the next layer is a little bit heavier, but still thin. And I'm normally using a palette knife to. Um, to put my colors and getting close to the you know the, the harmony of the colors and shapes, and then next layer is when I start building the uh, the the, uh, the paint uh, on the canvas, and it's going from thin from underpainting very thin to very heavy uh, at the end of the last layers, the finalizing layers of paint, what I call accent layer, uh, very thick, uh, especially like highlights. So two mediums that I'm using. Uh, one medium is I call medium two as underpainting medium, and this medium consists of two two parts. One part part is uh, varnish, and I'm using gloss, high gloss Darmar varnish, and another part is uh, just a Gimsol by. Um, by uh, gambling, I'm sorry, <laughs> by gambling. So, what is the, how many parts in my medium? How many parts of uh, Darmar, Dam, Dambar, and how many parts of Gimsol? So, ratio is that two, ratio is two to one. Two parts of Darmar varnish, and one part of uh, Gimsol. So, two to one. So, why this is important? By the way, this is traditional, um, medium for in, in, in Russian schools, uh, art schools, uh, they, they use probably two uh, mediums. One is called number two, one is number three, one is two parts uh, and another one is uh, three parts of different, uh, different stuff in, in it. I'm using this, this is a traditional, uh, traditional in Russian schools, so two parts of Darmar, one part of Gimsol and it works as a, a binder between canvas and next layers. So I actually serve this two, uh, two ideas. Uh, one is just to cover the white uh, canvas, build the uh, binder between the layer and the actual colors and give some idea on for uh, under painting or under colors that I'm gonna use in next layers of when, I'm, when I paint. Um, so this is one medium for underpainting. So when I'm done, I'm not using it uh, for next layers because I'm jumping to my gels. Uh, I'm using 90 percent, uh, 90, 90% of uh, first layers. I'm using um, solvent-free gel by Gambling, and I, I love it. Sometimes, especially when I'm painting in, in studio and I need heavy layers, I'm using terpenoid gel. Uh, I think it's by Weber company. So those two gels that I'm using and I'm not going to switch, okay? So this is right here, I'm shooting uh, another video from my phone. So I'm just putting this so you can see the, the name. So this is terpenoid, terpenoid gel and this is gambling uh, solvent-free solvent gel. Right, so this is two gels that I'm using constantly. So let's jump on my palette, the colors that I'm using. And I'm gonna switch to my phone, so we're recording from, from the phone. So, 
starting from here, going counterclockwise. Uh, white. I'm using titanium white, and I'm using titanium white uh, by the company called Lucas. It's a uh, BUX base uh, colors, professional grade. It's called Lucas 1862. Love this uh, titanium white. Fast drying time and uh, consist consistency of the uh, oil. Never. I never. I'm using. Not a lot of titanium white, but I'm trying not to use a lot. But for many tubes that I used, I never see oil separation on in this in this uh, in this group or in this paint. Uh, for example, if I open, I can show you if I open uh, Richardson. Uh, it's uh, unbleached. But sometimes I'm using. Sometimes it's not on my palette. So it's just for cases that I, I just need that you will see you will see, see that oil inside and trust me yesterday I opened this tube for and I'm not using this tube I wasn't using this tube for maybe a couple months I, I probably got maybe a tablespoon of oil uh, from top of the tube so it's a huge oil separation I never seen it on Lucas paint on any colors. So very high and uh, artist grade, professional grade oil painting. So this is titanium white. Next one is my gel and that's the reason why I have titanium white and then gel so I don't want to contaminate my white with yellow or any any other colors. So this is why I have a gel right in the middle and I'm actually thinking to move my titanium white somewhere here. So it's completely away from any colors. So this is solvent free by Gambling. So solvent free gel by Gambling right here. The next one is, you know what, let me try to put actually colors. So I'm going to just stay in white. I have big tubes and small tubes right here. So next one is uh, Cat Lemon by, this is Russian paint. Traditional Russian paint uh, company in St. Petersburg called St. Petersburg Masterclass. They have Masterclass and they have lower, lower end for like students. So this is high end, uh, less expensive, loaded. I mean, loaded with uh, pigments. Uh, a lot of, you know, not a lot. Most of the artists in the Russian are using uh, this paint. So this is my cat. This is, let me put my glasses on so I can read it. So yeah, this is Cat, uh, Cat and Lemon, Cat Lemon by St. Petersburg Masterclass, okay? This is this color right here, and I love this color. And again, the idea of, I forgot to mention it, the idea of colors, why I have many colors, and this is my studio, by the way, this is my studio set. I'm using a lot of colors in my studio when I'm painting. When I go on, on plein air, I'm eliminating a lot of colors. I'm not taking it with me. I will take maybe several groups. And groups, I will explain what is group. So for example, yellow lemon is a cold color. And next, my trusty Lucas Cat Yellow Light right here is warm. And I can show you, if you take this, And you take this, and you know how to mix, how to check the colors, right? Bias of the colors. If you need to know what the bias, what I mean by saying bias of the color, watch the video bias, color bias. So bias meaning there is something in the base of the color that is uh, driving the color. Is it cold or warm? So basically, you know that titanium white is a cold color, and if you add titanium white to cold bias, it will turn to cold because you're doubling the you know the cold cold bias. So if you look at the lemon, you can see obviously see that's a cold color. You can see it's it's cold, right? Now I add cold to warm, so I, I'm not doubling coldness of of, of, of paint, but actually reducing a little bit, but still showing that this is a warm color. 
So the group of the colors that I mentioned before is cold and warm. So I have cold yellow, cold, uh, I mean cold yellow, warm, uh, warm yellow. So I have cold yellow and warm yellow. Sometimes I call it hot yellow. And my ochres, I have cold ochre and warm color, uh, warm uh, ochre. And on my ochre group, again, this is another group, I have cold and warm. And then we go to blue, I have, I have, I have I, again, I have warm and cold. In green, I have the same thing, and I will show you. That's why I have groups. Uh, some paint, I don't have a group. So for example, uh, orange. Uh, orange is a medium, I mean, medium color between, or in the middle between my yellow and red. That's why I have only one orange. And I'm not sure there's an actual cold orange. I'm not sure. But, okay, let's move on. Uh, let's move on. Let me clean this. Because I'm going to mix some other colors to show you. So the next one is my ochre group. And ochre group, I have two. One is by uh, Blick. And it's light yellow ochre. And it's right here. And again, I can show you the differences. Oops. So it's by Blick. I have the same color from uh, Masterclass, St. Petersburg, but I just like consistency of this paint much, much better. To be honest, I actually like Blick colors. Very professional, um, I mean, professional grade, uh, loaded with pigments, and I never seen uh, oil separation in in these colors as well. Sometimes you see like one drop of oil coming, but it's not like real separation when oil is just pouring out of tube. So this is yellow, uh, yellow ochre light by Blick, and it's right here. And the next one will be uh, gold ochre by Gambling, and it's right here. And I can show you the differences. Let me move a little bit this here so you can see the difference or differences so let me add white right here and let me add white over here again we see have a doubling cold bias or we uh, reducing so let me mix this so this is light yellow light ochre And this is gold ochre, and you can see right away. You know, tell me which one is cold, which one is warm. Obviously, yellow uh, yellow light ochre is cold. You see the bias? It's actually falling into cold side, and this is still warm. So this is warm, uh, one warm. At least for me. So that's how I'm using it. If I'm using somewhere in the cold, uh, the idea is to uh, to put cold with warm constantly. Uh, so you, you have this interest in, uh, in a variety of colors right next to each other. That's how it works. Uh, so this is my next, this is my ochre group, okay? So let me clean it. Boom, boom. And also, as you can see, I'm mixing, my mixing area is white. And I used to paint on gray and I migrated to white because it's much easier to, to mix colors on white and transfer to white canvas. Uh, when I used to use a gray color, I always was off in my mixing and I have to bring, bring the value up for some reason. And then figure out that because I'm mixing gray and transfer it to white white canvas. So let's move on. Next one is orange and my orange is my orange is by gambling and it's uh, cadmium orange. Simple cadmium, cadmium orange and I'm using it uh, a lot. Yes I can mix I can mix this color my yellow with red and I probably can get the same orange I can get a little bit more of this so this is a mixed orange 
and this is this is this or, uh, or cadmium orange but you can see if I mix colors see the brightness of this the chrome of this the chrome of this even if I have already tried it many many times even if I get even more it will start falling into yellow but it will never get as bright as this this is the only reason I'm using this out of tube because it's high chrome uh, orange all right so that's why I have orange because a lot of people tell, you know will ask me well why do you have orange if you can mix the orange why why do you have greens if you can mix greens well, duh. I have it because you can mix it you, you just can't physically can't mix it uh, something inside how I'm not sure I'm not sure how they're mixing it but definitely they're mixing this color but I can I when I'm mixing right here I cannot get that color and I have to spend time I rather spend time working on my canvas than on on my palette mixing all right next one is red and again I have again I have two reds one is cat red light it's right here cat red light by gambling and then next one is very interesting this is blue rich Terra Rosa. It's right here, this color. And again, let's mix both and see what bias is on Terra Rosa uh, by Blue Ridge. Again, this is uh, highest, uh, high-end professional grade uh, oil. I made it in somewhere in, uh, in South Carolina. Uh, I have to admit, this is expensive. I, expensive paint. I used to use it a lot. Uh, I have all the colors in, from Blue Ridge, but I realized I can get something really less expensive and get the same result. That's why I migrate from uh, Blue Ridge. But I highly recommend it. But it's expensive. You can use some other colors. All right, so let's uh, let's mix and see what we can get from it. Actually, let me move it right here. What we can get, again, we're taking white here. And we'll take white right here. Now, this pigment, I mean, this paint is loaded with pigment. And you can see you have to add a lot of, a lot of uh, titanium white to kill it. I mean, not to kill it, but to lower the chroma, uh, the chroma intensity. All right, so this is Terra Rosa with titanium white, and this is, and this is Cat Red Light. All right, and here's the dilemma. Sometimes people tell me this is warm and this is cold. And uh, in my opinion, this is actually cold because I can see the bias, it's falling into cold, right? It's falling into, it. you can see that it's just cold color. And this is more warm color. It's not really hot, but it's still on the warm side. That's why I have this is a warm, this is a cold. Ah, red. All right, so Terra Rosa by Blue Ridge and um, Cat Red Light by Gambling. So let me clean this. And if you ask me if what I have on my palette, is it glass or uh, a plastic? It's a glass. Then you can get it from any Home Depot. All you have to do is just send, take it sandpaper and just sand the edges to make sure you're not cutting your fingers or damaging anything. All right, so next three, and I'm trying to push it. So next three, this is just simple uh, Elizabeth Crimson. Um, I'm using it by uh, by Gambling, Elizabeth Crimson by Gambling. Uh, I love this color. Some people say that, you know, Elizabeth Crimson, uh, uh, when it's dried with the edge, it will actually dark, darken the entire painting. Maybe. Uh, I don't see it in my painting, even now it's like six, seven years old, uh, that I have still in uh, like study painting. I, I didn't see this. Maybe in 15, 20 years, maybe. But, so, yeah, so far I don't see anything. So this is Gambling 
um, the Lizzie and Crimson. Next one is a very interesting color and I have this and it's very expensive. Oh, sorry, New York, a uh, company from New York, they mixing professional high, high end uh, uh, paints, all the, all the color, uh, oil paints. Um, this tube is actually uh, Vasari, a uh, colored name is Ruby Violet. The reason I still have it, and I bought it when I took a uh, workshop with Scott Christensen, and you know, Vasari was there and basically said, like, if you want to be in my workshop, you have to get it because you won't be able to uh, mix the colors without, because he's using it constantly with this paint. Uh, believe it or not, this tube is 50, I, I bought it for $52, just one tube. But guess what? I'm gonna buy another tube when I'm out of this because I cannot find any anything to replace it with. Like, there's no same colors from St. Petersburg, from Gambling, from I mean, I tried different different colors, different brands, and uh, results were like terrible, terrible. So this is a color I probably will stick, even though it's fifty-two dollars a tube. But it's loaded with pigment. pigment and you have you need just a little bit to get uh, whatever you need. And I'm using this color m most of the time to get my darkest dark. And I will I will show you. So it's right here, this color. And what how I'm using it? I just take a tip, just a little bit, and then ultramarine blue, and I take viridian, and I mix it. And this is my darkest dark. Viridian and a little more blue and crimson. That's it. Can get darker than that. And it's a few. Let's say a few. See that? See how how many variety of colors inside? Violet, blue, green, everything. So when you put this on the counter, it's just, it's glowing like crazy. So that's the reason I'm I'm using this color, and we'll be using it unless they close up and we'll be out of business, which I hope not gonna happen. Because they're good, really good colors. Um, I would love to use a lot of them, but they're just crazy expensive, crazy expensive. All right, so this is my group, two groups of cold and warm colors um, in each group. Also, you may ask what this color is. This is colors that I'm, I'm, I'm having right now on my palette. Sometimes I'm using it, sometimes I'm not using it, but it is uh, by St. Petersburg Russian Paint uh, Masterclass and it's called Cobalt, Cobalt uh, Violet Deep. Cobalt Violet Deep. That's how you, you know, Cobalt Fialetovi Tomny. This is how it sounds in Russian. All right, so I'm using it mostly uh, in dark parts of like greens and uh, green colors, like as a shadow or something. Uh, it's loaded with pigment, but this is semi-transparent colors. That's actually more like transparent because you have to put a lot of this paint to, to see the difference. All right, so this is uh, violet deep, cobalt violet deep. I'm not gonna put it here because it's not all the time on my palette. All right, and I'm still testing. So this is a group from, from this side. Let me put this, everything back in, in my box. So my blues, I love blues. I'm not, I love, now let's jump on blue and other colors. So my, uh, on the blue side, I'm using uh, five blues. One is uh, ultramarine, ultramarine, ultramarine blue or, or ultramarine blue. Um, and it's by Gambling. And I have same color in the St. Petersburg, from St. Petersburg Masterclass, uh, identical. So I may uh, finish this and jump on St. Petersburg. So this is my blue, Gambling by Gambling, um, ultramarine blue. The next one is Cobalt Blue, and this is by St. Petersburg. Cobalt uh, Blue Medium, they have several, they have Cobalt Spectrum and Cobalt Blue Medium. So this is uh, Cobalt Blue Medium, and I love this color, loaded with pigment. And again, compared to any expensive brand, this is 
on the same level of like high-end professional paint, but cost maybe one third of price of like uh, Asari or uh, old gambling. I mean old uh, or Hunt, whatever. Uh, those expensive uh, paints. All right. So this is Cobalt Blue Medium. Next one is uh, same. Uh, same uh, brand, St. Petersburg Masterclass, and it's called Royal Bloom. Royal Bloom. Um, this is, and, and again, this is for my, in, in my experience, if I mix this, this is more warm color, even though it's blue, and said so how blue can be, oh yeah, all blues are falling into cold colors, right? They have warm colors, but from those, blue colors which are falling into cold colors the bias of the, those colors are different so the bias in the cobalt blue and then let's say um, uh, royal blue different and I, I can show you so this is royal blue and if I add look at this I've add this for me this is this is really warm color bias even though it's blue falling into cold colors but look at this one and I add so for me this is more cold or more colder than this this is more kind of warmer but so this is two different and I can mix probably I mean they will be same in, in, in value but the chroma of colors are completely different that's why it has cobalt I'm using it for one and when you especially how to check how to check the blues right very easy just take uh, for example let's take uh, lemon right lemon right here and then we'll take lemon right here I will add cobalt right here this is what green will get and I will take royal blue and I will get here. Completely two different yellows. And that's what I'm saying, look at this. This is, from, for me, is more colder because it's falling into cold than this. So that's why cobalt for me is a warm color. The bias is actually warm. And royal blue is uh, cold. But look for, okay, so this is my uh, blues and let's move to the next one and I will show you the good example of bias of this color so next one is the king's blue same king's blue from different company different brand so this is by Williamsburg king's blue by Williamsburg let's add white right here now this is really warm look at this this is really warm even though it's blue it should be cold but bias of this cold color is actually warm and then let's take lemon and add and add lemon to this Ooh, look at that look at this look at this color so definitely it's warm, right? Same blue. So that's why I have three, I mean five blues. And let's look, let's take a look at the last one, last blue that I'm using and it's by gambling, it's a cobalt, cobalt teal. And I really like this color and I'll show you why. So this is cobalt teal and again, let's, let's put one here and one over here. Let's move colors right here. And let's add white here. Is it cold or warm? Tell me. I think it's warm, really warm. And then let's let's take this and it will be shocked. And add. Woo! <laughs> now I'm going to try to use this color, probably not, <laughs> unless I'm painting something like Toys for Us. All right, so really warm. So the, actually it's going from cold, um, 
Uh, ultramarine blue is sometimes it depends. Um, for me, it's a more warm color. Then cobalt blue is warm. Then king's blue is cold, very cold. But if you divide from like this, this is what I'm trying. Sometimes I do. So this is from the coldest part. So they falling into cold, even though they have a warm bias. But this side is definitely on the warmer side. This blues, okay. So ultramarine blue by Gambling, cobalt blue medium by Saint Petersburg Masterclass, then uh, royal blue by Masterclass uh, Saint Petersburg Russian Paint, then King's blue by Williamsburg, and then cobalt teal by Gambling. And these are my blues that I'm using. Let's move to my next colors and my next colors are green and browns or earth colors. So the first one is actually uh, cat green by gambling right here. Cat green by gambling. And again, I have warm colors and cold colors groups. Now, this color is uh, something that I'm using to bring the value up. I'm, I'm, keep in mind, the titanium white is a very cold color. So if you're adding to your warm colors, it's reducing the warmness of the color. So sometimes you don't want it. And you want to, uh, to light or bring the uh, tonality or value up without removing the uh, coldness or uh, warmness. You don't want to add any cold uh, kind of uh, cold shades to it or kill the what I call kill the color, right? So for example, if you mix, if you mix, um, well, let's mix something. Let's mix this and uh, let's say, let's say blue, so we make it green. So we're making this beautiful green, right? And then look what happening. What will happen if you start adding palette knife? And you start adding see what happening? It looks like you just you just move the color into several steps of in value but if you look at the chroma the chroma is actually completely gone not completely but it's you just remove the chroma of the green because you it's it's becoming more cold and if I move if I add more more white white titanium white this will become cold color even though this is not cold color this is a warm color see this it's a cold color if you put this on the canvas, it's not going to shine. It's, you have to put this right next to a warm color, so it's going to work together. This it's a cold color, but what if, if I want to bring this up, value up, and not kill the kill the chroma? Look what happened if I add this color. I just move this one step up and the chroma is the same. See this? So this is my medium color to move just to move the value up. And or sometimes I'm adding this again. This is my warm color, so I want to kill the chroma. So I'm using this as a my mixing mixing color. So it's uh, it is cat green. Light. I mean cat green, I call it cat green light, but it's actually cat green by gambling. All right, let me clean the palette and we'll look into other my greens. And this will be interesting because next group of green is from different brands, but different brands, this is my greens, different brands, 
but they call the same viridian color. So this viridian is by St. Petersburg masterclass called viridian, right here, see? And this one is viridian by gambling, right here. I'm actually finishing this tube. Viridian by gambling, but look in, in the bias of those colors. So I'm gonna put it one over here, and I got this viridian over here. And how to check the color? Add titanium white. So titanium white right here, and titanium white right here. Let's mix it. Now this is viridian by gambling. You tell me what what bias it has. And this is viridian by Saint Petersburg. Cold viridian, warm viridian, and this is this is the reason I have this group right here because this is a cold, this is my warm, and I can put them together side by side, and the paint start you know vibrating, not vibrating, because it's a different different colors together, so it's you know there's contrast, there's a fight between the colors, which is good. All right, that's why I'm using viridian from gambling and written from St. Petersburg Masterclass. We'll paint right here. Boom. All right, so let's move, move on. And we'll talk about, we'll talk about my browns color, my earth color, which I don't use a lot. Okay, this is simple. Uh, this is simple burnt sienna by gambling right here, burnt sienna, and I don't use raw raw sienna or, or, or raw umber, even though I have it, I have a tube right here, but I'm using it, and I will show you when I'm using it. So this is burnt sienna right here, and another color is very very loaded with the pigment and it's called transparent mars orange by saint petersburg masterclass russian painting and it's right here you don't need to dig actually alive because it's like loaded very loaded with pigments so let's test it let's add we need to put a little bit more on transparent orange and you tell me which one is cold, which one is warm. Now this is a burnt sienna. And this is the reason why this is called transparent orange, Mars orange. Transparent Mars orange. Now which one is cold, which one is warm? <laughs> so burnt sienna cold bias is cold, uh, or transparent Mars orange is the bias is warm. So that's why I have this group right here. I'm not a big fan of using it, but a lot of, I mean, sometimes I'm using it if it's needed. So these are the groups of my palette or, or colors of the uh, or groups of my colors. Uh, my studio setup and my Palette. I mean, the uh, plain air palette is limited. I'm not taking all this color because my plain air is uh, just a study uh, of the subject or matter or uh, whatever I'm painting. Um, the view. It's just a study. I'm trying to get the colors, right colors, and make maybe. Uh, one, two, maybe sometimes three studies, and then I bring everything into the studio, and from those studies, and from photograph, I'm actually painting, uh, I'm working on big paint, uh, big, you know, larger format, and I, I already have studies, I have references, I have photo, just as a, for, the, uh, for composition, for sometimes, and I will show you in another video how I'm using a digital um, imaging uh, for, for my painting 
and there is a controversy of uh, you know why we, we didn't have to use uh, we didn't have to use like iPads or iPhones or any other devices. Absolutely not. <laughs> it's absolute nonsense. Um, uh, you know, if, I'm not sure if you saw a uh, Van Gogh uh, movie. Uh, yeah, I believe if we can if we can go to mach time machine and move ourselves to Rembrandt era or uh, Velasquez or <laughs> Sergeant and we'll show them iPad, they will be jumping like crazy. Oh yes, <laughs> we can use it, this is awesome. Uh, you can use it, don't abuse it, but use it. Um, you have to go outside and paint outside uh, in plein air style just to study the colors and study the, you know, the difference differences between when you look at the uh, you know the screen digital screen a photograph and what you see in, in reality because our eyes there is millions of millions of millions megapixels or I mean pixels uh, or millions of megapixels whatever uh, it's like God created our eye you know the vision is like amazing um, no, uh, no chips will, will be able to you know to, to substitute so you have to go outside and paint outside and study, do all the study just to... So you can come to studio, you have all these references from your studies, you have photograph as a reference. But main, your main reference to when you paint is you experience what you saw, you know, or your experience of light, or colors, what you, you know, what is actually in reality when you are outside painting outside. It, it, experience, so those, that, this is why painting is not just um, Painting is not, um, uh, you know, creating the photographs on our canvas. This is impression. This is like how we, what you express. I just actually recently, uh, my mind or my, my mentality of painting is just flipped because um, I was I was looking at one interview of a collector, one of the main collector in the United States. And she mentioned the one thing that just I just stopped, and I uh, I went back I don't know how many times just to and she she said a simple thing. Uh, the question to her was like how how what the artist needs to do uh, to uh, to get to to you or to get to collectors, and she said like paint with your soul, paint with your soul, don't paint, and I like. In my paintings, I'm trying to, you know, well, I have to stay in the boundaries of school, right? Or let's say Russian traditional school or whatever school I was, I was taught to, to to paint. But you know what? Maybe you have to get out from this and just be expressive on on the on the canvas and just paint with, with what we feel. Like put your soul, not soul, soul. And you know, I'm delivered. I very careful using this <laughs> this term, but paint what you feel like be more you have all these colors that you got created be more you know uh, sometimes you have to go crazy uh, you know what I'm, I'm actually experimenting sometimes I just put a canvas like you know what let me just what I feel just put in canvas all the colors what I feel today and it's amazing it's just amazing so this is a different subject we're gonna talk about this different you know this will be different uh, video so for today um, this is my. These are my colors that I'm using on uh, my studio set. And when, when I go on plein air, I will probably take several groups. I would. I won't take my uh, greens completely. I will not take my browns. I don't need it because I can mix the browns. I will take my blues, my yellows, and my reds. So, of course, three main uh, colors uh, that you can paint. And then. Definitely a lizard and crimson, but it's fall, kind of falling into red colors. Uh, cold and warm, cold and warm, and I'm constantly uh, in my mind, and I would recommend practicing it to get you know, to get to know your colors, and especially not the colors, but bias of the colors. And again, this will be another video. It's going to be another video on bias, how to. I uh, will be mixing and trying. Uh, you saw it today, how to separate it, but. It will be another video. So th these are my colors. So if you have any questions, please shoot. I'm gonna come up with another uh, videos all uh, about you know small tips how to paint in oil. Again, I'm not a teacher. I'm not trying to teach you. I'm gonna just 
uh, trying to share my knowledge and uh, just my time in my studio painting and sharing with you. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe below and put your like if you like it. If you don't, that's okay. Uh, so thank you for watching and I will see you next time.